method, what you simple all you simply do is you simply you have to find the overall rotational matrix. Um, if you only have one rotation, that's easy. If you have multiple rotations, all you have to do is multiply the first rotation that you did by the second, by the third, by the fourth, all the way until you get to the end of all the rotations that you had to perform. So in this case, we p first performed a 90 degree rotation about the RZ, followed by a 90 degree rotation about the uh, X axis. So we multiply in that order. We multiply the RZ pi on 2 rotation by the RX pi on 2 rotation. So that matrix by that matrix, and to give us this. Hopefully you can remember matrix multiplication. First column by first row, adding up whatever else. So that one by that one, that one by that one, that one by that one, adding up those multiplications to give you the first element. If not, just type it into, a, into any graphics calculator and it'll spit out the answer. But you should roughly know um, how to do it. And you get something like this. We then, what we have to do, we then have to get our actual homogeneous transform. So this is just the overall rotational matrix, as I, I like to call it. We then combine the overall rotation matrix R with the translational matrix D to find the overall homogeneous transform relating, in this case, frame 0 and 1 um, in its current fig configuration. Now, yeah, this, is, this homogeneous transform will only work in the current configuration. We'll talk a little bit later about how you can kind of do a generalized uh, transformation matrix. Okay, so you notice here, basically the first, you notice that's a 4x4 four four element, a uh, 4x4 four four matrix to start off with. And so the first 3x3 three three, uh, elements is the rotational matrix, the overall one. You're then the last part of that 3x3 three three to make the a 3x4 three, a four, three four is the displacement. And then the bottom part is simply 0, 0, 0, 1. The reason that you put this in here is because when you multiply homogeneous transform transformations together, you want them, you want matrix multiplication to work out. And so to do that, you need to... Um, the easiest way for matrix multiplication to work is if you have square matrices. And so this simply makes it a square matrix and while still not affecting um, the overall result. It won't, it won't scale it, it won't do anything like that, it won't change the result, it just makes the matrix multiplication easy. It's similar if you multiply identity, like an identity matrix by something, that's basically what that is. So identity matrix is zeros everywhere besides 1, 1, 1. If you multiply that identity matrix with anything, you still get the same matrix. So that's what we're kind of doing here. If you didn't really understand that identity matrix, don't worry. Um, so we need to do the same process for to find H12. So if we use the same current frame method, what we needed to do, we needed to do a positive to get the first reference frame looking like the second reference frame. Uh, you can go look back, looking back at the picture quickly. So to get this one, in this one, all we need to do is to rotate. So you notice that the Z's are currently pointing the same direction. So we should rotate about those axes, uh, whatever amount, to get the other two pointing the same. So to do that, we just need to rotate about Z. Um, this We just need to rotate about this one, uh, the Z axis, by 90 degrees. Okay, and so to, and that's exactly what I've done. So rotating by, oh, went too far. So we rotate by 90 degrees. There was also a translational in this case only. Remember, this could um, this is an extension value, like it's a prismatic arm here. So this value, currently, I've set it as constant, but it could actually change. Again, I'll explain how you do uh, more generalized transformations a little bit later on when we look at the dh parameters and whatnot. So this is a translation of three, and that gets us looking and a rotation of of 90 degrees or pi on two radians about the z1 axis will get us looking like the z2, uh, the, sorry, the um, second reference frame. So we've performed, we then use the RZ rotational matrix again of with a theta value of pi on 2, um, spitting out this matrix here. And we didn't perform any other rotations, so this is, our over, this is also our overall rotational matrix. We then combine that and our displacement, so 0 in the X, 0 in the Y, 3 in the Z, to give us this give us H12 and its overall homogeneous transform. So this relates reference frame 2 back into reference frame 1. And so again, you notice that the rotational part is here, the displacement part is here, and we have the 0, 0, 1 uh, business down the bottom to make it a square matrix, so matrix multiplication works. So we've related frames uh, one to uh, 0 to 1 and 1 to 2, 
but we still need to relate frame zero to two. Now you could do uh, the process of going, okay, how do we rotate reference frame one uh, into reference frame, uh, sorry, reference frame zero into reference frame two, but to stop repetitive calculations and whatnot, um, as I was explaining before, we found H12 to stop this, uh, to stop these rep repetitive calculations. And what you simply have to do to find H02 is you found H01 and H12. You can multiply these two things together to give us our overall matrix. Okay, and this is where this 4x4 business comes in. Um, so you get this 4x4 matrix by this 4x4 matrix to give us the overall H02 matrix. So how we relate something in re in the second reference frame back to the fir uh, zeroth reference frame. So this is what we get. And this kind of makes sense. The rotational is a bit hard to intuitively look at, but you can generally look at the displacement stuff if it's in a pretty easy to uh, visualize configuration and see if it makes sense. So we notice that to go from reference frame 2 to reference frame 0 or 0 to 2, you need to move 3 in the X to go from the origin of reference frame 0, I should say, to the origin of reference frame 2. You've got to move 3 in the x direction, 0 in the y direction, and 2 in the z direction. So let's go see if that actually makes sense. Okay, so if we're moving from this, if we're moving from this reference frame to this reference frame, so this origin to this origin, we, we were told that you need to move 3 in the x, 0 in the y, 0 in the 2. Does that make sense? Well, first off, three in the x, we'll, we'll do we'll do zero, so we'll do the two, to go from here to here, you need to move two in the z, okay, and three in the x direction, and which is, and zero in the y direction, so exactly what a homogeneous transform spits out. So it makes sense how to go from here to here, etc., etc. Okay, so we've related those reference frames. Excellent. Okay, so we've got h02, and you can do the same thing to h one two, or like to check them, or this one for ex or H zero one, okay. So we found our uh, homogeneous transforms. So we've done question one. Question two was we said okay we have this point Q superscript two, so a point in uh, reference frame two. How do we relate that back to zero? So we've got this point here. So if we think about it to begin with, okay. If we, let's just intuitively let's try and work out a value that we would expect to get. So to go from here to this point, we'd need to go up three in the Z naught direction. And then to then we would need to go negative one in the Y, di y naught direction and five in the X naught direction. So we would have five, negative one, three would, should be our answer. When, when we transform, when we relate Q superscript to, to uh, back to the re base reference frame. So we've currently got Q in Q in the second reference frame. We want to relate it back to the zeroth reference frame. So you uh, write it like this. So what is currently at one one two. So one x one y two z if you relate it just back to the ref second reference frame, which is how it's been set up. You then just add this one on again. Again, this is just so that the matrix multiplication works out because you have a four by four matrix, so you need to multiply by a four by one to end up with a four by one matrix again. Okay, so what we do is we multiply our uh, homogeneous transform by our Q2, and you kind of notice that these things kind of like cancel as such almost. You can think of it like that to get Q naught. So we multiply our homogeneous transform by Q2 to give us Q0. And we get 5x, negative 1y, and 3z in the base reference frame, which, is, as I explained before, is what we should expect. Uh, so this uh, thing makes sense. You notice that this 1 still trails here. Um, that You just basically take that off. It's just like a tailing uh, 1, and you just ignore it. So Q0, or Q in the base reference frame, is 5x, negative 1y, 3z, and as I said before, that's what expected. So we know our homogeneous transform works. The final question was, um, let me go back to it, just so you guys kind of can see it again. 
Find the transform matri transformation matrix using DH parameters and A matrices. Okay, so some guys in robotics a while ago, they're like, we're kind of they were kind of sick of doing these homogeneous transforms, um, and they they wanted to try and find a generalized um, matrix that you could use for any configuration sort of robot or anything like that um, to relate two reference frames to get to each other, whether that be one to zero um, or one to two. Um, obviously, you can't do you could do zero to two. I think I'm not too sure. Don't don't uh, uh don't. I will not confirm that, but you can definitely do one, two, or zero, one. You can go between the links. Um, and basically, what they did is they said, okay, well, if we set up the axes in such a certain way, if we follow some certain rules, we can eliminate the six variables because you could have six different movements. You could have a rotation about all three ac uh, like each axis individually, as well as a displacement in each axis. So six variables. Um, how can we eliminate some of those variables? And what they worked out is if you set it up in, if you set your axes, your joint, sorry, your coordinate frames for each joint um, in such a way, you can actually eliminate some, two of those variables, and you get four new variables um, and only four variables. Okay? And so, got to go down a little bit further to question three. Okay. Um, so you have to set these up according to some rules. Uh, you can go look at, I'm not going to explain the rules here, but basically your Z um, axis points in the direction of actuation, that's the, for a revolute joint, that's the way it rotates. So if it, for example, if you go look back here, the axis of actuation is here. So this revolves around Z0. For prismatic joint, Z1, uh, Z, the Z axis points in the direction of this extension. You then set up the X, uh, the X1 axis or the axis greater than by one. Like uh, for joint, you can set the base reference from in any sense except that um, Z0, Z0 must point in the axis of actuation. You then set up X1 according to some rules and then you f basically simply follow the right hand rule to set up Y1. X1 is generally that it um, intersects the plane created by Z0 and Z1 or Z1, Z2, etc. Um, but if you want to go look up the rules, simply open up a robotics textbook or Google and look for DH parameters and uh, link joint and link labeling, and you should kind of find um, what you're looking for and how what the rules actually are. Um, they're not hard to understand or whatnot. Um, but then what we then have to do, so once you set up, and I set this, I've set this robot up um, correctly so that the uh, axes follow the correct conventions and follow the rules, you then need to find the A, the um, AI, alpha I, DI, and theta I for each of the links. Now these correspond to different...